Today, I will be looking at the new version of Manjaro. Its lead developer recently announced the release of its new iteration on the Manjaro forums. This update entails a wide spectrum of changes in relation to the main desktop environments. Many changes were made to GNOME KIDDY and XFCE. Other less prominent under the hood changes were also made. Without any further ado, let's take a look at Manjaro 24.1. Let's start with the GNOME edition. It was finally bumped up to the GNOME 46 series and currently sits at the 46.5 version. GNOME 46 was initially released in May of this year, but has gone through a lot of refinement over the past few months. I'm glad that it is now conveniently available to use in Manjaro. This version brings with it substantial feature updates and changes. Firstly, when we go into the GNOME File Manager, it now has a new global search feature. You can easily search files and do so rapidly with the help of GNOME's file index and searching capabilities. Other GUI file managers don't really search well in my experience. Either they are really slow or they don't find the file I was searching for to begin with. Nautilus, on the other hand, has always been, in my opinion, a better choice as I don't encounter these problems with it. Furthermore, it can also search the contents of files, which is pretty impressive. On top of which, it has a pretty well-implemented filtering system too. In this new update with Global Search, you can search in multiple locations simultaneously, including directories outside of your home folder. If you want to set this up, go to the Search Location Settings and add particular locations you always want to be included. Another update was also made to enhance GNOME's remote desktop experience you now get a dedicated remote login option. This allows for connection to a GNOME system that is not already in use. With this feature, you can now configure the system's display from the remote side and won't need to do it locally. The settings application in GNOME has also had several changes. It has been vastly reorganized to make it easier to navigate the options and categories. A new system section has been created. You can see options like region, date, and so on. Additionally, a lot of minor improvements were also made. A lot of the GNOME core applications have been upgraded. This update encompasses not just aesthetic changes, but also performance changes under the hood. For example, Nautilus, the files app had major code refactoring. This increased performance noticeably and switching views now feels incredibly fast. Moreover, other improvements include reduced memory usage for search, as well as enhanced screen reading terminal speed improvements, and even malware protection features in the image viewer. There have also been work done on the variable refresh rate feature too. To enable the experimental setting, you can just open a terminal and run the following command. Moving on to KDE next. Manjaro images now ship with KDE 6.1. This is the version of KDE where a lot of new features were implemented. A lot of work likewise has been done to the Wayland version of Plasma in order to reduce the reliance on X Wayland. Also, a remote desktop can be started directly from the System Settings Manager. This will make it quite easy to connect to remote desktops and interact with them using clients such as KRDC. Other new features include the Plasma Edit Mode. We have a lot of settings here made easily available. Just right click anywhere on the desktop and click on the edit mode option here. We can add widgets, panels, set themes and wallpaper. Another neat addition is when Plasma running Wayland remembers the apps you last open. The people over at KDE call it persistent apps. That is, it can restore your last session very easily. For example, if you log off or shut down with several open windows and start up again, you will see that Plasma remembers all the apps you had open. It will allow you to get into your workflow very easily and quickly. This feature has existed in X for a long time and has always worked flawlessly, but now has finally gotten implemented in Wayland. The shutdown dialog message has also been reduced. You now get only shutdown and cancel instead of having all options listed. You also get the features like Shake to expand the cursor and triple buffering support in Wayland 2. Manjaro still defaults to X11, but you could switch it to Wayland if for some reason you need to. Now for XFCE. 
Manjaro will be shipping with XFCE version 4.18. Duna now has a new file highlight feature in the file properties dialog message. Here you can use a custom color for both background and foreground. You also have an image preview on this side too. A split view was also added. This view will allow you to use two active windows independently of each other and also interact with one another with drag and drop support options. This sidebar too has had several changes. You now have a new book orc menu to add folders, a recent entry tab too, with other changes to the layout of the status bar and loading preferences. You can also restore apps on startup too. Things like recursive search was also added. When it comes to the environment itself, XFCE tends to be more conservative with changes. Nonetheless, improvements and features were added. If we go into the panel settings, we can now configure length with pixels rather than percentages. This allows for more accurate adjustments. You can now also use the Keep Panel Above Windows option that will let apps draw behind the panel. This will be very useful if you prefer to use the XFCE panel in ascended floating style. The clock can also now be changed when it comes to font family and font size. You can also modify the time and date format to a custom display too. Other changes include the ability to disable header bars in the XFCE appearance setting. You can show or hide the delete option in context menus. You can also pick a default behavior for multi-monitor setups. When it comes to the kernel, Manjaro in our ships with 6.10, but support for 6.6 .6 and 6.1 LTS versions is still available for those on older hardware. Anyway, this has been my video on the new release of Manjaro 24.1. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.